I'm Stephen Jeroge Solomon. And Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. So I'm a son in this house. And I'm married to one Susan. Uh, Pastor Susan, she's not with us this day. She's uh, hosting uh, our family members, the, the house of my father. So that's why she's not able to come. And I also want to appreciate God for this opportunity. Uh, go, I uh, to appreciate God for this opportunity. And even our bishop and our mom. For allowing me to, uh, to be here and also the pastoral team. And I also thank each one of you for coming, uh, for coming this day. Uh, uh, David in Psalms 84 said, 84, 84, that better is one day in the house of the Lord than in, uh, in a thousand other places. He, he desired to be a dog keeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the camp of the wicked. So tell your neighbor that you are in the right place. And uh, I thank God last week we were in Shiro. As we were celebrating God for uh, bringing this ministry for, for 40 years. And even as we stand here, so now we are talking about after 40. But I, I, I picked three things from the uh, Sunday speaker, uh, the three things he, prof uh, he, he prophesied about us. Uh, that God is taking us to new frontiers, uh, frontiers without, with no limits. Because as, as Abraham was told, he was told uh, north, south, east, and west. So there are frontiers with no limits. That's what we are trusting God for in this new phase. And then the second thing he said, uh, he, was told, uh, he declared upon us is that we, we need to arise and walk. So we have been reminded that there is still some work we need to do. And this second point is what I, I, I'll, be, uh, I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be building on. And as, uh, the third thing he reminded us is that just as the Lord has been with us for the last 40 years, and gave us victory, he's also going to give us victory even in, the, uh, in this uh, uh, next 40 years and beyond. So the, to, today's uh, her, uh, message is entitled After 40. Uh, there are challenges to face head on. So after 40, there are challenges to face head on. We need to know that numbers in the Bible have great significance and should never be seen as just some coincidence. They take on symbolic meaning and significance. God uses numbers consistently to bring out spiritual truth. Uh, for example, one significance, beginning or unit. One, one, stands, uh, one, uh, one, one is beginning or unit. 
Seven speaks of perfection. And 12 of uh, the gov government uh, is symbolic of governance. But uh, when you talk about 40, 40 speaks of probation. They, uh, talks about testing. Uh, closing in in victory or judgment and judgment we need to know that judgment can be positive or negative for those who have been put in their place of work under probation we know that after probation there is confirmation or establishment. After testing, there is testimony. After trial, there is victory. So therefore, even as, whether we are talking about 40 days, or 40 days and 40 nights, 40 years, they all have the same symbolic meaning of significance. And as uh, on Sunday, uh, the, the, the speaker was speaking to us and reminding us that after 40, there is 41. So, uh, so, so the Lord caused me to remember that between uh, 2002 and 2007, I was operating Matatu business. And specifically, I was in the route co uh, co called, uh, 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 I was in the Embasava route. So, Embakasi to Savannah, Greenfield, all those areas. But one, one thing that was unique is the name that I was operating uh, under. So at the front, uh, at, the, uh, at the front on the top of the weed screen, I had written uh, after 40 days. And at the back there were three dots uh, uh, and, and then God's victory came. And people could tell me, I know these dots mean, mean a lot. And, and indeed they meant a lot and uh, I, wa I was and I'm, I sti I'm still convicted that our God remains our song changer he's our song changer and we want to badrishia wimbo he, and he gives us new song, songs of victory. And today our key verse uh, that is 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 16. So and the word of God says that for 40 days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. So here we see that for these 40 days, so the Philistine champion who was Goliath came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. And uh, he, he was taking his, his stand to be able to challenge uh, uh, Saul and his, his army. And uh, uh, as Saul and the, and the army could hear that, they, uh, they, were, they were terrified because he was a giant. But something changed. 
lakini kuna ile hali ilibadilika in verse 23 katika uh, andiko la 23 so goliath came bragging as he used to as uh, goliath akakuja akijigamba kama vile alikuwa amezoea uh, bragging and shouting na akiwa ana uh, paza sauti na kujiringa and uh, he was challenging the israelites alikuwa anaweza kuwa itia wa israeli wakuje wapigana na yeye but the, the last three words indicates and and david had it na yale maneno ya mwisho ya matatu yanasema ya kwamba daudi akasikia hayo maneno and it's important for us to know that uh, 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 to, to, to go back to verse 16 just uh, you'll go back on your own ni vizuri ukaende ukarejelea ule mstari wa 16 peke yako due to disobedience of soul kwa sababu ya kutotii kwa Saulo so he was told his kingdom is, is going to come to an end akaambiwa kwamba ufalme wake ungefika kikomo and god was to find a man after his own heart na mungu alikuwa atafuta mungu mtu alikuwa ako na moyo ambayo unamtafuta so in first samuel chapter 16 verse 13 katika samueli wa kwanza 16 mstari wa 13 so there david was anointed a uh, pale daudi akaweza kuwekwa mafuta and anointing made him to be somebody different na ile ukutiwa mafuta ikamfanya kuwa mtu wa tofauti and in verse 14 the scripture indicates na katika mstari wa 14 mam neno linasema that uh, 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 16 uh, 16 1 Samuel 16 katika mstari wa 16 16 16 13 and 14 maybe uh, so you would make uh, a 16 Samuel wa kwanza 16 mstari wa 16 So so here the word of God says that so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers this is David from that day on the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David so Samuel uh, then went to Rama verse 14 Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul and uh, and an evil spirit from the, uh, the Lord tormented him. So but the main thing here we can see we remember even Saul had been anointed. But because of his disobedience his kingdom came to an uh, was specified that will come to an end and once david was anointed then the spirit of the lord left saul and the imprecation that was there na hili inamaanisha ya kwamba the israelites were lions ya kwamba waisraeli walikuwa simba but they were being raided by a sheep lakini walikuwa naongozwa na kondoo So it's better to be sheep led by a lion than being uh, lions led by a sheep. So that was scenario well, that was the scenario. But things took a, a turn around in verse 23. When David came in and this, remember David had been anointed. The spirit of the Lord was on him. Now we go to chapter 17. That was uh, 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 Sasa, chapter 17. Anything I will refer will be chapter 17. Sasa tuenende kwenye sura ya 17. Yeah, but that was just uh, b- background uh, information. Hiyo ilikuwa hali ya kuweka msingi. And when David came uh, the, the reason I'm saying things took a different turn. Mambo yalichukua hali tofauti. Because in verse 26 David uh, saw something uh, else which anyone else was not seeing. Ah, Daudi katika mstari wa 26 akaona kitu ambacho watu wengine hawakuwa wanaona because because david called called him the uncircumcised philistine akamwambia yule mfilisti ambaye hajatahiriwa and he saw that he was defying the armies of the living god akaona kwamba alikuwa na dhihaki jeshi la mungu aliye hai but when goliath was confronting him lakini wakati goliath alikuwa anakuja mbele zake so when goliath was confri- confronting the israelites wakati goliath alikuwa anakuja mbele za waisraeli he was calling them the armies of soul alikuwa anawaita jeshi la Saulo so he was distorting their identity kwa hivyo alikuwa anaharibu utambulisho wao so here david notices that there is some disgrace that is there ya daudi akaona ya kwamba kuna ile kudhihakiwa kulikuwa pale and he realized that uh, this was someone who was not in covenant with god akajua kwamba huyo ni mtu ambaye hana agano na mungu and indeed he was defying the armies of the living god na akajua kwamba alikuwa na 
Because he knew they were not the armies of, uh, of Saul, but they were the armies of the living God. And later we, see, uh, we know that David confronted uh, Goliath. And he was able to, uh, and he was able to, um, uh, uh, to defeat him. And even as he was confronting him, he did not go on with his own power. But he relied on God. Uh, because uh, he, in, in verse 45 he said that uh, that that, uh, that he was not going against him in, uh, he was going against him in the name of God Almighty the, the God of the armies of Israel whom he had defied and God indeed we know that he granted David and the Israelites victory so uh, as we, uh, we are going to pick a few lessons from, uh, uh, from David even as we embrace uh, the, the challenges uh, even, even as we purpose to face the challenges head on uh, after 40 so and the main scripture just for your noting is first Samuel chapter 17 from verse 1 to 53 and because of time, we will not read everything. That's why I've decided to give that background information. So, uh, so the first lesson that we can learn from, uh, uh, from David is that obedience leads us to our opportunities. Obedience leads us to our opportunities. Uh, as later you are going to, 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 to see, you see that David obeyed his father to go and check on his brother, three brothers who are in the Saul's uh, in, in the, the Saul's army. And also to take food to them. And his obedience to his father was a divine setup for him to get an opportunity of a lifetime. Because the opportunity was what we saw in verse 23. That he had uh, uh, he had Goriad uh, bragging. And remember him, he had been anointed. So, and we know that from there, that's where we, uh, uh, we see the life of David uh, having a turn around. A similar scenario of someone who also obeyed is, is seen uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And this is the story of, uh, of Saul. So the word of God says that there was a man of Benjamin who, whose name was Kish and the son of Abiel, the son of Zerah, the son of uh, Betra, and the son of Apiha, uh, a Benjamite, a mighty man of, of power. And he had a choice and had some son whose name was Saul. And there was not a more handsome person than he was among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upwards, he was taller than any of the people. Verse 3. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish, Kish said to his son Saul, Please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. So he was able to go and look after the donkey. But after a lot of struggle, he was reminded by the servant that he was with that there was a man of God in the town. And they, they decided to go and see the man of God. Verse 15 to 17 of that scripture shows that, that it was a divine setup. 
um, mstari wa 15 mpaka wa 17 unaonyesha kwamba hii ilikuwa hali mpango wa Mungu uh, the word of God says that now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came saying Ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa ameambia ameambia Samueli siku kabla ya Saulo aje Tomorrow about this time Ale kesho kama wakati kama huu I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin Ya kutumia mtu kutoka nchi ya Benjamin You shall anoint him commander of of my people Israel Utaweza kumtia mafuta akawe jemedari juu ya watu wangu wa Israeli That he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines Ya kaweza kuokoa watu wangu kutoka mikononi mwa Wafilisti For I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me Kwa sababu nimeangalia watu wangu kwa sababu kuna kilio chao ambacho kimenikujia So when Samuel saw Saul the Lord said to him there he is the man of whom I spoke to you this is the one shall reign over my people so Saul just obeyed his father but we see that it was a divine setup for him to be the king of Israel and and the scripture also reminds us that obedience is better than sacrifice. That even at that after 40, so one thing we need to do, we need to walk in the path of obedience for us to get victory. As we run to obey, opportunities will show up. Remember, uh, uh, so, so uh, and we know opportunities are never lost. So opportunities are unremissed. So if uh, David had disobeyed his father, he could not have gotten an opportunity to hear uh, uh, Goliath uh, bragging about uh, uh, bragging. But when he had, he was provoked. He was restless and he started to inquire further. So the first lesson we have seen is that obedience leads us to our opportunities. The second lesson we can be able to learn from the life of David we view things differently when we, we identify a cause in it. We view things differently when we identify a cause in it. At this particular time, let's read uh, verse 27 to 29. So the word of God says that, and the people answered, uh, uh, this was David as he was inquiring, what will be done to the person who kills uh, uh, the, the Philistine uh, champion. So he says, and the, uh, so, 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 uh, and the people answered him in this saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard what he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few uh, uh, those few, I think, fro uh, uh, sheep in the wilderness. I know you are proud and in insolence of, of your heart, and for you have come down to see the battle. But uh, in verse 29, the last uh, four, uh, five, five words are very important. And here, David, uh, uh, the word of God says, and David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? 
jambo la kushughulikia hapa so 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 he was asking is there not a a, 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 gen, a, 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 a genuine purpose for 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 for, for, uh, for me to ask this question alikuwa anauliza kwani hakuna sababu mzuri ya mimi kuuliza hili swali so I went, I, I went to and checked uh, the, some of the synonyms the words that sound the same uh, with the, the name uh, the word cause niliweza kuangalia maneno ambayo yana maanisha jina sawia na lile neno and one of them was give rise to na moja hapo ni ile ya kusema kutoa jambo la or read to or resort in ah ya kuweza kuingia kwake ama kutoa matokeo fulani in other words our perspectives change when we understand the why hii ni kumaanisha kwamba mtazamo wetu unabadilika wakati tunaona or even see the bigger picture so uh, here we, uh, one thing is that david had a bigger picture he was seeing that indeed there was some uh, there was this disgrace to the children uh, to the children of israel he was saying that uh, the person who was doing this was not in covenant relationship with God. And he was saying that God was being dishonored. Even even for us uh, we will not we will not hesitate to support the vision of this ministry. When we buy into the vision. But David, but David ignored his brother because he believed there was a cause. The cause was to remove disgrace from Israel and to bring an end to the defiance towards the armies of the living God. For he knew that Israel remains uh, the Lord's special treasure or treasured possession. The, the cause made David to be restless. Even for us when we know the why that will bring a difference in our lives. Why do you serve? Do you, for example, if you are serving God, do you know why you serve God? Is it for people to see or what is the reason behind it? But let's serve the Lord because we are the redeemed of the Lord. And the, the responsibility of the redeemed is to serve the Lord for the rest of our lives. The third reason we can be able to learn from David only the truth we know and apply benefits us. Only the truth we know and apply benefits us. So David knew and understood that he and the rest of the Israelites were in covenant relationship with God. Which was unlike Goliath and the other Philistines. And we, uh, if we are in a covenant, a covenant has both benefits and responsibilities. And one of the benefits, yeah, you are, you are, you are, you are, if you are in covenant, uh, you, you are, the battles of your partner becomes your, uh, your covenant partner becomes your battles. Na yule mwenye mkono agano na yeye anakuwa anapigana vita zako. So and uh, we saw in two instances. Katika hali mbili tuna uh, tunaona. So David referring to go, uh, to Goliath as, as the uh, uncircumcised Philistines. Tunaona Daudi akimuita Goliath yule mfilisti ambaye hajatahiriwa. In verse 26 and in verse 36 which we can read uh, we can read. Mstari wa 26 na mstari wa 36. 
So uh, here it says, then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 36. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. So David, as, as he, was, uh, 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 he, he, was uh, he, he was declaring, he was asking this. He was referring to what, he, uh, what is indicated in uh, Genesis 17, 9 to 11. And the word of God says that uh, as for you, you shall keep my covenant and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. So here we see that David came with a covenant mentality. So the others were they were not invoking the truth that they knew. And that's why we are saying that only the truth we know and apply will benefit us. So David, as he was calling uh, this uh, Goliath the uh, uncircumcised Philistine, uh, so he was showing his conviction that he knew Gol, uh, Goliath was disadvantaged. As he was not in covenant with God. So in our diverse situations, we need to know, to know what, word of God, what the word of God says or declares in our situations. We cannot reclaim or declare what we know and believe in. So it's good to know uh, to know the truth that is in the word of God. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. Even in the new frontier of after 40, we are still the church. Uh, because Jesus is, is the one who is building his church. And church is not this building. It's we, it's we, we God's people. And all the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. So uh, the fourth reason we can run. That despite accepting the challenge. Some people might, uh, uh, even, uh, even after accepting the challenge, some people might doubt our capacity to accomplish. We can see nobody dared even to try to, to, say, to volunteer themselves. But in verse 28, we see uh, 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 David's bro elder brother doubting his motive and capacity. When he had him inquire what will be done to a man who kills the Philistine champion. And then in verse 32 and 33, that despite David volunteering himself to go and fight the Philistine uh, uh, champion who is Goriath, while well, no one else dared to, King Saul doubted his capacity to accomplish the mission. But David was confident. 
that the Lord who rescued him from the cross of the lion and the bear would rescue him from the Philistines champion. Yule Mungu ambaye alimwokoa kutokana na meno ya dubu na simba, ataweza kumwokoa kutokana na kutoka mikononi mwa shujaa wa Filisti. And because of his confidence and conviction in the Lord his rescuer, ya kwamba kwa sababu ya ule uhakikisho na ujasiri ya kwamba Mungu ataweza kumkomboa, Saul finally gave his consent and blessing declaring Saulo akaweza kumpatia baraka zake akimwambia And may the Lord be with you. Uh, Mungu na akawe nawe. We can read that verse 34 to 37 uh, very quickly. Tunaweza soma pale kwenye mstari wa 34 mpaka wa mstari wa 37. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear came and took a ram out of the flock uh, out of the flock Okay. Uh, then we can just proceed but uh, that is that 34 and that 7 is very powerful mstari wa 34 oh, yeah, uh, imerudi so the bus that 5 i went out after it and struck it and delivered the ram from its mouth and when it arose against me i caught it by its beer and struck and killed it your servant has killed both rayon and the beer and these uncircumcised Philistines will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living god verse 37 moreover david said the lord who delivered me so you see he's acknowledging god anatambua nguvu za mungu the lord who delivered me from the power of the lion and from the power of the uh, of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this philistine and so said to david go and the lord be with you so that was uh, we saw the brother uh, 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 doubted his motive and capacity ndugu yake aliweza kutilia shaka uwezo wake Uh, so uh, he here also doubted his, capa- uh, his capacity na pia saulo akaweza kutilia shaka and rata even goriath also uh, also despised him and also doubted his capacity to challenge him na hata shujaf goriath akaweza kutilia shaka uwezo wake but in all this david remained focused in his god given assignment lakini kwa haya yote daudi aliendelea kulenga ile jukumu yake ambaye alikuwa amepewa na mungu he knew that the time that he was looking after his father's frock alijua ya kwamba wakati alikuwa anashughulikia mbuzi akondoa baba yake that was a time for preparation ilikuwa ni wakati wa kutayarishwa he was growing roots alikuwa anamea mizizi so and we need to run from every experience that we are going through tunastahili tukajifunze kutokana na hali yoyote ambayo tunapitia because every op- uh, every experience has a lesson to offer kwa sababu hali yote ambayo tunapitia kuna somo ndani yake but we can uh, but, uh, but you can waste an experience by not running from it tunaweza kosa uh, kusoma kutoka kwa hali yoyote ambayo tunapitia kwa kukosa kusoma juu yake Friends we need to know that our God remains the great I am. Ah uh, rafiki tukajifundisha ya kwamba Mungu anabaki kuwa Mungu ambaye ni yule yule. Not the great I was or the great I will be. Si yule mkuu ambaye alikuwa ama yule atakayekuwa lakini yule aliye. And the I am determines the I can. Na yule ambaye aliye anamaanisha ah uh, yale ambayo tunaweza fanya God is able to continue to reveal himself in his various dimensions Mungu anastahili anaweza kuendelea kujitihirisha katika hali zile tofauti To David he had uh, he had revealed himself in the uh, in, in the dimension of a rescuer Kwa Daudi alikuwa amejidhihirisha kama mkombozi In your situation he can reveal himself as your hero yule katika hali yako anaweza jidhihirisha kama mponyaji as your provider kama yule ambaye anakupea as jehovah nisi one who gives you victory yule ambaye anakupa ushindi and the fifth lesson which is the final one na somo la tano ambalo ndilo la kutamatisha victory is assured ah uh, ushindi umehakikishwa when we have the right backing wakati tuko na Uh, yule kuungwa mkono na yule ambaye anastahili victory is assured when we have the right backing uh, sisi tumehakikisha ushindi kama tumeungwa mkono na yule ambaye anafaa uh, in your own time you read verse 45 to 51 wakati wako mwenyewe ukasoma mstari wa 10 na 44 na 45 to 51 uh, 45 to 55 uh, na 5 na 51 we see here that things took a different turn Tunaona kwamba mambo yalichukua mkondo mpya when David confronted Goliath boldly by declaring uh, to him that he was going against him in the name of the Lord Lord Almighty wakati Daudi alienda kukabiliana na Goliath akimwambia kwamba alikuwa anaenda kwa jina lake Mungu 
and God uh, and the God of the armies of Israel na Mungu wa majeshi ya Israeli whom he had defied yule alikuwa amedhihaki and God granted uh, uh, granted uh, David and the Israelites victory na Mungu akaweza kupea Daudi na Waisraeli ushindi pale and also uh, from numbers uh, 13 uh, you, you are, in your own time you can be able to see that uh, the 12 spies were sent tunaona katika hesabu 15 tatu ya kwamba kuna wale wa watu walitumwa wakaweza kuangalia ile nchi and uh, in numbers uh, 13:25 it says that at the end of the 40 days na katika mstari wa 25 tunaona kwamba baada ya siku zile 40 they they they, they, uh, they returned from exploring the land wale wakatok wakarudi kutoka kuangalia ile nchi and they came back to Moses and Aaron na wakawarejelea wale Musa na Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran na wale wana wa Israeli pale kwenye pale Kadesh there they reported to them and uh, to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land wakaweza kuwaletea taarifa na wakaonyesha pia matunda ya ile nchi uh, and they gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But uh, later we see in verse 30 that uh, the, the, other, the others gave a negative report. Na tunaona katika mstari wa 30 kwamba wale wengine walipeana taarifa ambayo ni mbaya. But oh, we see Caleb, uh, uh, Caleb uh, uh, and, uh, and Joshua they give a positive report. Na tunaona Caleb na Joshua walitoa taarifa ambayo ilikuwa ya kutia moyo. Because they were not doing it on their self they knew that they were doing with the backing of God. Kwa sababu walijua kwamba hawakuwa wanafanya yale peke yao lakini walikuwa wameungwa mkono na Mungu. And later in uh, uh, the following chapter that is numbers 14 katika sura inayofuata because of their disobedience from verse 33 kutokana na ule kukosa kutii they were told they were going to perish in the de- in the in the, de- in the wilderness waliambiwa ya kwamba wangeweza kuangamia kule nyikani and that for every that for every of the every day of the 40 days that they they, they explored the land kwa kila siku ambayo waliweza kuitazama ile nchi it will be one year Wange- so, yeah, we can read that this verse for, for, for it says uh, uh, that for it says for 40 day, 40 years one year for each of the 40 days you explored the land you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to be against uh, uh, to be against you so god was reminding them this is what it will mean for you being against me uh-huh. so and this we can only do this when we, we walk in murmuring when we, we, we fail to exercise faith uh, mambo haya yanaweza tupata tukitembea kwa kunungunika na kukosa ku but many a times David found himself in diverse situations. And he had trust and confidence in God. Like in Psalm 18, 28 and 29. Verse 28 and 29. Here there is powerful declaration from, uh, from, uh, from David. And he's saying, you Lord keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help I can advance against a troop kwa uwepo na usaidizi wako naweza kabiliana na adui and with, with my god i can scale over a wall na kwa nguvu za mungu naweza aruka juu ya ukuta and even in psalm 63 when david was in the desert uh, in the desert of uh, in the desert of juda na hata katika zaburi 63 in verse 1 he described the how, how the desert was ah uh, katika mstari wa kwanza anaelezea kama vile and he was saying that he was in a uh, uh, he, he, that he was in a dry patch land where there is no water. But 
But in verse 2 he makes a powerful declaration. Lakini katika mstari wa pili anatoa tangazo la nguvu sana. That he was saying that I've seen you in the sanctuary. Ya kwamba nimeona katika hekalu and beheld your power and your glory. Na nimeweza kutazama nguvu zako na utukufu wako. Even in his situation he desired to see the power and the glory of God. Hata katika hali yake alitamani kuona nguvu na utukufu wa Bwana. And there is this song which goes uh, uh, this chorus which goes I believe to see the power the power of the lord i believe to see the power the power of the lord. i believe to see the victory the victory is a powerful song so uh, we may desire in our diverse situations na kwamba tunatamani katika hali zetu tofauti to see the power and the glory of god kuona nguvu na utukufu wa mungu and uh, in second chronicle chapter 32 verse 7 and 8 katika mambo ya nyakati katika tunaona haya second chronicle 32:7 and 8 katika mambo ya nyakati ya 32 wa pili 32 mstari wa 7 mpaka wa 8 these were the words of king hezekia and he was telling uh, uh, people of israel and judah be strong and courageous ah yule mfalme hezekia alikuwa anaambia watu mkawe na ujasiri na nguvu do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of assyria and the msiweze kuogopa kwa sababu ya yule mfalme and the vast army with him na jeshi kubwa ambalo ako nalo for there is a great a greater power with us kwa sababu kuna nguvu kuu nasi kushinda zile zake even for us we have a greater power in the after 40 hata sisi tuko na nguvu kuu baada ya 40 with him is only the arm of fresh ah yeye tu ako na nguvu za kibinafsi na nyama but with us is the lord our god lakini sisi tuko na mungu ambaye ni Mungu mkuu to help us and to fight our battles. Kuweza kutupigania vita vyetu. And the people uh, and the people gained confidence from what the king of Judah said. Na watu wakaweza kupata ujasiri kutokana na maneno ambayo uh, Hezekia mfalme wa Judah aliyosema. And what we see uh, we, we let us we, we, we let us see that uh, uh, in from verse 51 Tunaona kwenye mstari wa 51 Uh, of the chapter that we are reading that first Samuel chapter 17 ah uh, katika ile sura ambayo tunasoma Samuel wa kwanza 17 it says that therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine took his sword and drew it out from its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it and when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead they freed verse 52 now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted so here When they arose and shouted. Wakati waliinuka na kupaza sauti. Remember these people were very timid. Watu hao walikuwa na uoga sana. But now that the the, 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 the giant has fallen. Lakini kwa sababu shuja wao ameweza kushindwa. So now they were able now to uh, to stand up uh, uh, to come out with a shout. Kwa sababu shuja wao wa Filisti ameweza kushindwa wakainuka na sauti kubwa. And ch- and chased away the Philistines. Na wakaweza kuwafukuza wale wa Filisti. So uh, uh, the Lord uh, God remains uh, our song changer. Ah uh, Mungu wetu anabaki kuwa yule anabadilisha wimbo wetu. He gives us new songs songs of victory. Anatupea nyimbo mpya na nyimbo za ushindi. So in the after our 40 Uh, baada ya miaka 40 there will be new challenges for us to accept tutakuwa na changamoto mpya ambazo tutakabiliana nazo because we know that greater is the power with us kwa sababu tunajua kwamba nguvu zilizo nazi ni kuu sana for the lord is with us kwa sababu mungu yupo pamoja nasi to help us and to fight our battles ataweza kutusaidia na kupigana vita vyetu so as we conclude tunapotamatisha let's remember tukaweze kukumbuka hivi that obedience is key for us so that we can be able to, uh, to meet uh, the, the opportunity that god has put in place for us and then we also saw we view things differently when we identify the cause in it and And only the truth we know and apply will benefit us. Na yule ukweli tu, ule ukweli tu ambao tuna tunajua na kutendeza kazi ndio utaweza kuleta faida maishani mwetu. And despite uh, accepting the challenge, na hata ka, kama tutaweza kupokea ile changamoto, some people may doubt our capacity to accomplish. 
kuna wale ambao watatilia shaka uwezo wetu wa kutimiza jukumu but we should not give up lakini hatustahili kukata tamaa because we can look back in faith and in gratitude tuna kwa sababu tunaweza angalia Mungu kwa ama, imani na kushukuru and see what god has done for us in the past tukaweza kuangalia mambo yale Mungu ameweza kututimizia remember, remember that he remains the ancient of days tunajua ya kwamba yeye anabaki kule yule alikuwa Uh, who changes not yule ambaye habadiliki and specializes in the uh, in lifting us from one level of glory to another na yeye anajishughulisha sana na kuweza kutuinua kutoka kiwango kimoja mpaka kingine and finally we have seen that victory is assured when we have the right backing na la mwisho tunajua ya kwamba ushindi umehakikishwa kwetu because greater is the power with us kwa sababu nguvu zile tuko nazo ni kuu sana for the lord is with us kwa sababu mungu yuko pamoja nasi to help us and to fight our battles uweze kutusaidia na kupigana vita vyetu as i conclude napata matisha jesus declared yesu akatangaza it's fi- at the cross he declared it's finished ah uh, pale msalabani akatangaza kwamba imeisha In other words he was he, uh, he was decree, he was declaring the words there is a cause. Alikuwa anatangaza ya kwamba kuna jukumu pale na ameweza ku We have the victory. Tuko na ushindi pale. So Jesus was openly openly declaring there is a cause by dying for our sins. Ah Yesu alikuwa anatangaza waziwazi ya kwamba kulikuwa na jukumu kwa kufia dhambi zetu. Our brokenness our sicknesses. Ile kuvunjika kuvunjika kwetu na ile maradhi yetu. He defeated the powers of darkness. Akaweza kushinda nguvu za kuzimu. Even today, hata leo, Jesus says, Yesu anasema hivi. Yes, your life has a purpose. Ah, uh, hata maisha yako yako na jukumu fulani. It has a meaning. Kuna kusudi na maana fulani. I died for you because you were the cause. Nilikufia kwa sababu kulikuwa ulikuwa ndiye kusudi. Jesus came like uh, uh, Jesus came. Yesu alikuja. Like David na kama Daudi destroying our enemies akakuja akangamiza um, adui zetu and that's why today we can confess and declare na ndio leo tunaweza shuhudia na kutangaza that we are the righteous of god na sisi ndio watakatifu wa Mungu not because of what we have done si kwa sababu ya yale mazuri tumetenda but because of the finished work of jesus lakini kwa sababu ya ile kazi ambayo imalizwa pale msalabani and we know that we have the right backing na tunajua ya kwamba tumeungwa mkono na Did you come to this service and did not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? Ulikuja kwa ibada hii na hata hujamjua Yesu kama mwokozi wa maisha yako. This this afternoon you can say yes to Jesus. Alasidi ya leo unaweza sema ndiyo kwa Yesu. And Jesus is able to come into your life. Na Yesu ataweza kuingia katika maisha yako. And you bring change and transformation. Na ataweza kuleta mabadiliko katika maisha yako. So are you there and you'd like to receive Jesus uh, as Lord and Savior of your life? Kwa pale na ungeweza kumpokea Yesu kama mwokozi wa maisha yako. You can lift up your hand in in whatever area you are bit down here uh, in the balcony overflow or even the tent. Popote ulipo unaweza inua mkono wako. And somebody will see that hand. Na kuna mtu ataona huo mkono. And you'll pray with you. Na ataweza kuomba na wewe. So even after this, hata baada ya haya You can see any one of the readers. Unaweza ona mmoja wapo wa wale viongozi. And I know that you'll be assisted. Na utaweza kusaidiwa. So and even for us those who have uh, are in the uh, already have received Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Na hata wale ambao tumewapokea tayari Yesu kama mwokozi wetu. Let's walk uh, let's begin this week knowing that we are in a privileged position. Tukaweze kuendelea tukijua ya kwamba tuko mahali tumewekwa pako na na because we are in a covenant with the king of kings because we said yes to jesus and despite the chan- the giants that are on your way na hata kama kuna majitu katika maisha yako you can face them knowing that uh, you're not alone unaweza kabiliana na hayo majitu ukijua ya kwamba hauko and you can say like david na unaweza sema kama daudi that uh, uh, with you uh, with your help I can advance against a troop ya kwamba mika kwa msaada wako naweza kabiliana na and with, and with you my god i can scale over every wall na kwako nikiwa na wewe mungu naweza ruka juu ya kila ukuta wowote i would like you stand we we end with the, uh, with the prayer ningetaka tukasimame tukamalize kwa maombi so let's pray acha tukaombe our father and our god in the mighty name of jesus we want to come before you lord with thanksgiving lord in our heart thank you jehovah god for ministering to us lord even through your word and lord you have reminded us king of glory that indeed after 40 
we can face the challenges, uh, we can face uh, uh, the challenges before us head on. Because Heavenly Father, Lord, you cause us King of Glory to walk, Lord, in obedience, King of Glory. And Heavenly Father, Lord, that Lord you see, Lord, your purpose is King of Glory in your life, in our lives, Jehovah God. And Lord, I pray, King of Glory, for each one of us, King of Glory. May all that, Lord, you have purpose, Lord, for each one of us. Cause it to come to pass, Lord, in full and without any form of delay in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray, Jehovah God, that Lord, may your word continue to grow richly in us, King of Glory. And that, Lord, you continue to know the promises that, Lord, are in your word, King of Glory. That, Lord, in our diverse situations, Lord, you'll be able to declare or claim those promises, King of Glory. Because, Lord, your promises are A and Amen. And, Lord, that even when others, King of Glory, oh, doubt, Lord, our capacity and our motive, King of Glory. Lord, you remember that, Lord, you remain the ancient of days who is forever faithful. And that, Lord, you are exalted in power. Lord, your understanding, Lord, has no limit, King of glory. And heavenly Father, Lord, we know, King of glory, that, Lord, we have the right backing because, Lord, greater is the power with us to help us, Lord, and to fight our battles. As we begin a new week, Jehovah God, give us a great and a victorious week. Lord, in the after 40, Jehovah God, you have carried us through in the past, King of glory. Lord, we know that, Lord, you also carry us, Lord, even in this new, uh, in 40 and uh, after 40 and beyond, King of glory. Because, Lord, you go before us. Lord, you be our rear guard. Lord, you give us victory. You remain our song changer, Jehovah God. Continue to give us new songs, songs of victory. Because you are God and there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.